Greetings, denizens of the internet. Today's topic, hiding in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. The topic of hiding in D&D can be a little bit contentious. Different dungeon masters tend to interpret the rules a little bit differently depending on how they want to run their campaigns. And that's totally acceptable. House rules are what they are. If your dungeon master just wants to make the rule, make a stealth check, and if that beats the other creature's passive perception, then you're hidden. Then that's fine. But are you really hidden? Am I hiding now? Am I hiding now? Oh, I am so hidden. We'll take a look at how hiding actually works in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition after you have a look at this sweet animation, during which you can feel free to like and subscribe and share the heck out of this video. My name is Brian Carey, and I am the Savvy Barbarian. Hiding in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Why is this such a big deal? And how do so many people get this? Mm, not exactly with rules as written. Now, if your Dungeon Master wants to change the rules and that's his house rules, that's fine. I'm going to look at the Player's Handbook and show you rules as written for how hiding is supposed to work in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and maybe a way to tweak it a little bit and make it a little bit more believable and fun for your narrative. Hiding in plain sight is incredibly important, especially to the rogue class. It's important to hunters and rangers as well, but for the rogue, they get an ability called Sneak Attack. Sneak Attack allows the ranger to um, exploit a foe's distraction, and when they do this, they can launch what's called Sneak Attack. Sneak Attack allows the rogue to roll an extra 1d6 of damage, making them pretty heavy hitters, especially early on. One of the ways the rogue can accomplish the Sneak Attack is if they attack with advantage, which they can do anytime they're attacking from hiding. Of course, the rogue wants to come out of hiding, so they get advantage on their attack roll and therefore get the sneak attack bonus as often as they can. And some rogues will do this every single turn. So why does the rogue think they can go into hiding at the end of every single one of their turns? Well, at level two, the rogue gets this ability called Cunning Action. Starting at the second level, you are able to take a bonus action on each of your turns in combat, and this includes the Hide Action. And successfully hiding does mean that your Stealth Check, your Dexterity Roll, just needs to be higher than your opponent's Perception Check, their, their Wisdom Check. But is that exactly how that works? If you check page 177 of the Player's Handbook, we find this little nugget. It says, you can't hide, this is the second paragraph, you can't hide from a creature that can see you. Let's look at that one more time. You can't hide from a creature that can see you. That changes things a little bit. That means you can't just come into combat armed with a towel, cover your head and say, you can't see me. I mean, when you think about it, if you just dive behind a table, or behind a tombstone, or behind a tree, are you really hidden? I mean, if the creature knows where you are, are you hidden? I mean, you may be in full cover, they may not be able to target you because you're hidden behind a tombstone, but the monster knows where you are. Unless their intelligence is about a two or lower, they saw you dive behind the tombstone. They know exactly where you are, and you're not hidden. Now, the Ranger is a class that actually can hide in plain sight, but let's have a quick peek at what that hide in plain sight requires. If we look at hide in plain sight, it says starting at level 10, you spend one minute creating camouflage for yourself. Well, that means that's not a combat mechanic. One minute in combat would be uh, at six seconds a turn, that would be 10 turns worth of combat. And in the meantime, the enemy has seen them camouflaging themselves with leaves or, or mud or whatever it is they're going to camouflage themselves with. This is not actually a combat mechanic whatsoever. But the rogue has a much better way to exploit the sneak attack ability that they have. If you check out this second paragraph under sneak attack, it says, you don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of your target is within five feet of it. That enemy isn't incapacitated, you don't have a disadvantage on the attack roll, blah, blah, blah. So what that means is, as long as you have a colleague 
within five feet of the enemy you're attacking, you can attack with sneak attack. You don't actually need to come out of hiding every single time, nor are you able to within the game. Oh, but what if you were invisible, you might ask. What if you did chug an invisibility potion, or you get a neat spell and somebody casts invisibility on you? Can you hide now? Well, remember the rule says that you can't hide if an enemy can see you. If you're invisible, the enemy can't see you, therefore, you can hide. They have no idea where you're at. Although, if you give your position away by knocking over a lamp or making noise or, or something to that effect, you will give away your position and you're not hidden. So, how do you hide? Let's say you meet all the criteria, meaning that the Dungeon Master has agreed that the creature cannot actually see you, and you decide to hide. Well, both of you are going to roll a 20-sided dice, and it's basically going to be a contest to see who rolls higher. The one trying to hide is going to roll a dexterity that is a stealth check. You're going to use your stealth skill in the skill section on your character sheet. That means you're going to get your dexterity, plus you're going to add your proficiency to it. The creature trying to see you has two different ways that they're going to try to detect you. One is their passive perception. The other is the actual perception skill check. Now, if they're actively looking for you, they're going to roll the skill check for perception. But that number should never be lower than the passive perception. The passive perception is basically a floor value. They're actively searching for you gives them a number but the lowest number that they're going to get is going to be their passive perception. So let's say uh, their passive perception is a 12. Then they decide to actively search for you. The, the number should never be lower than the 12 they got when they weren't actively looking for you. They just happened to be glancing about and spotted you, but now if they're actively looking for you, they can't actually see you as good as if they hadn't been searching for you. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So if the Dungeon Master decides the creatures are going to be actively searching for you, he's going to roll his 20-sided dice, and he's going to do a perception check. And that perception check will not be any lower than the creature's passive perception. As long as your stealth skill check is higher than your opponent's passive perception or perception skill check, then congratulations, you're hidden. Now let's say your entire party wants to go into hiding. Everyone wants to sneak for that surprise round Yes, I know there's no surprise round in Dungeons and Dragons. Do I have to talk about that now? I guess surprise rounds are probably a thing. Here we go. What about your entire party? What if everyone in your party decides they want to go into hiding to lay waste to the oncoming uh, skeleton horde that's, that's meandering their way through the dungeon? Okay. Well, we'll probably have to touch base on how surprise rounds work. And yes, I in advance... I know there's no such thing as a surprise round. Individual creatures can be surprised, but there's not really a surprise round per se. Although it kind of works that way for all practical purposes. It's just for certain select creatures that actually suffer surprise. Okay, so your whole party decides to hide. What's going to happen is you're going to take the lowest score. So everyone in your party is going to do a stealth check. Everyone's going to roll the 20-sided dice, and they're going to add their stealth bonus if they have one. You are going to use the lowest roll at the table to be the value that you use for your creatures to compare against. So let's say, for example, you've got uh, your fighter walking in with scale mail armor. As you can see from the chart here, if they're walking in in ring mail, chain mail, split mail, plate, whatever it is, they roll with disadvantage on all of their stealth checks. If you've got this loud, noisy, plate mail clad uh, fighter walking in, clanging his armor, he's the worst. He's the one that is going to set off alarm bells for the creatures in the next room. He's the one that they're going to hear. And even though your rogue might be super stealthy and the rogue might be able to actually successfully hide, you're not going to get that surprise uh, uh, advantage on the creatures, on your enemies, if somebody else is making lots of noise and gets a really bad stealth roll. So the lowest value in your entire party is going to be basically the one that you're going to use to compare the creature's perception check with. If any one of you blows the creature's passive perception, well, then your party is not hidden. Now, the rogue is going to hate that idea. They want to say, well, I'm hidden. Sure, the fighter made a lot of noise, and he alerted the entire enemy party that were out here, but I'm still hidden, so shouldn't I still get the surprise round? Well, I guess that's kind of up to your dungeon master. I guess he could do that. The problem with that is it's really a delay of game. What I mean by that is that means what you're going to have to do is roll the contest between your dexterity versus the uh, opponent's wisdom check, their perception check, for every single combination if you want to play that way. 
You're going to have to say, if you're fighting four skeletons, skeleton one, does skeleton one see the rogue? Does skeleton one see the wizard? Does skeleton one see the, the, uh, the fighter? Does skeleton two see the rogue? Does skeleton two see the wizard? Does skeleton three see the fighter? Does skeleton three see the rogue? Does, you're, you're doing a lot of contests to see who is able to uh, be surprised by whom. Now, uh, compare that to your party is hidden and the enemy group either knows of your presence or doesn't. So say you have a group of skeletons. They have a passive perception of nine. If your fighter blows it and he rolls less than a nine because he's rolling with disadvantage, then it's all over. You know that all of your skeletons have a passive perception of nine. They all hurt him and they come a running. On the other hand, if your fighter manages to roll something a little higher, like an 11, he now beats the passive perception score of the skeletons and your party is hidden. It's a lot less dice rolls and it makes the game go a lot faster. So the hiding mechanics in Dungeons & Dragons aren't actually that hard. You can't hide if a creature can actually see you. However, if you do decide that you want to hide and the creature hasn't detected you yet, you can choose the hide action. You do a stealth check and compare that against the passive perception of the creatures that you're trying to avoid. Now you might say, Brian, haven't you ruined that uh, roguish, uh, excuse me, the cunning action? So at second level, you're allowed to take a hide action as a bonus action. No, that isn't ruined. Because this is saying something, this is giving you an ability to take a hide action as a bonus action. That means you can do your attack and then you can also attempt to hide. Anybody can take a hide action as their action on their turn. The cunning action allows the rogue to try to do, say, an attack as their action. And then as a bonus action, they can then do the cunning action and try to hide. Hopefully that clears up hiding in Dungeons & Dragons. Just remember that you need to be actually hiding. The creature can't actually see you for you to be hidden. And if the creature knows exactly where you are, you're not hidden. And now if you haven't done so already, feel free to click the like button down here below. It's somewhere, somewhere, ah, so much work to figure out where that's going to be. And then don't forget to click the subscribe button. And you have to click... You have to click the little bell icon down here too, or you won't be notified of new videos when they come out. Feel free to leave your comments in the trumpery here below and uh, tell me if you disagree. I'm sure I'm sure we're going to create some uh, some amount of hatred because that's not how some people play, and that's fine. If you've got a house rule and you want to play, if somebody wants to hide and you just want to compare stealth versus perception and call it a day and they're hidden in plain sight, that's up to you. You can do that. But uh, leave your comments. Let me know if that's how most people play. I want to hear about that. Just a quick video today. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something on hiding, or at least I made you think about it. This is Brian Carey reminding you to be a scholar and a barbarian.